To stain your clay, you'll first need to break the clay down into tiny pellets. Clay does not need to be wedged, and using scrap clay or trimmings is great for this. Do store the pellets on a board. I recommend using a white clay body for this to get a truer color from the stain. It is possible to tint red clays as well, but the result will be very different due to the iron in the clay body. Place your pellets in front of a fan or outside in the sun to dry them entirely. Pellets will need to be bone dry. Alternatively, you can let them dry out uncovered on your shelf. Hi everyone! I just wanted to do a quick disclaimer before we get to the meat of the video, and is that for colored clay and for colored slips, you're going to have to make line blends which it doesn't take that much clay, but it is a little bit of work just so you know how much mason stain that you're adding to the clay. Um, so these are our mason stains here. Well, this is mine. Um, you can use whatever color you like. Some colors need a higher percentage than others. So uh, for this one, we're gonna find out. So we can get away with one, three, five, or seven percent. Usually five is a pretty good area, but if you can get away with three or even less, you can save money and time by using less mason stain. And we're just gonna do like a small 200 gram batch. You can do 100 gram if you want. Um, and just keep it really small so you can just do a color test. Uh, I'm doing it a little bit larger so I can just do like a little pinch pot and I can see how the clay is working with it. And uh, I'll be firing it to cone six as well, just so I can see if the color makes it all the way through. Colors will tend to be really vibrant at 04, as you might know. And then at cone six, they'll kind of lose their vibrancy and be a little duller. Um, it's kind of like our underglazes. Mason stains are stronger than underglazes. So another thing that you'll need is a respirator or an N95 mask. Uh, I recommend a respirator if you have been fit tested and you don't need any kind of crazy cartridges, just the standard uh, paint cartridges work. This is purple here, but it's, it's the paint cartridges. Uh, they're just for dust and uh, it's to prevent you from inhaling anything, obtaining silicosis, it's a very serious disease, or an N95 that you will wear while you're doing the line blend and then just throw it away. Do not reuse an N95 mask. If you have the proper tools like a respirator or N95 mask, which you provide at your own expense, we will allow you to work in here. We do have an exhaust fan. It's not running right now, but right above you we have that and we have a scale. However, if you don't have a way to safely mask up, we can't have you mixing. Um, however, you can do this at home at your own risk if you don't want to wear a respirator. But uh, all you need is a scale and a food scale works just fine. This is like an industrial ceramic scale, but a food scale works just fine. They're like $10 on Amazon. That's what I use at home, it's fine. Um, be sure to do it in a well-ventilated area. Um, for us, it's this exhaust fan because we're indoors. However, you can use it outdoors. I would still wear a mask, um, not a cloth mask, an N95, quality mask. Some additional tools you will need are a bucket for dry materials, uh, bowls to mix in, water, uh, you'll need your clay, and then, where is it? You'll need an immersion blender. You can mix, mix it up with a whisk if you prefer. However, I like using an immersion blender. It's a lot faster and it's a lot easier to clean compared to a whisk because everything gets stuck in the whisk but it's a completely viable option, especially if that's all you have. Um, these are also fairly inexpensive. I don't recommend getting the most expensive one, uh, especially if you do line blends a lot or a lot of testing. That $30 immersion blender is just going to die in a year, so you might as well just get the $10 one. Set the scale to 200 grams or whatever you desire. Gently dump the pellets into the dry bucket until it balances at 200 grams.
Once you've made weight, dump the pellets into one of the mixing bowls. Repeat the process until all the bowls have their clay. Carefully measure out how much mason stain you'll need. 1% of 200 grams is 2 grams, 3% is 6, 5% is 10, and 7% is 14 grams. Add enough water to cover the clay and stain. Let the clay sit and become mushy. This is called slaking. Now that the clay is slaked, it's ready to mix. The clay should look like bloated dog kibbles left in water. Mix a little with a spoon or spatula. Scrape the walls and bottom to ensure that the stain isn't in clumps. Sorry about the view. Mix with an immersion blender. I like to pick it up and plop it down repeatedly to mush the clay under the blades. Add water as needed. It should be like the consistency of a smoothie. Pour your slip onto a clean plaster bat if you want clay. Otherwise, pour your slip into an airtight container. Spread the slip into a thin, even layer. Place the slip in front of the fan or in the sunshine until the sheen has disappeared from the surface. The clay will be ready to be scraped off with the plastic rib when it is matte and you can touch it without it sticking to your fingers. Store your clay in airtight containers and or plastic bags.